have a top 25 matchup between number 15, Gonzaga, and number 21, Paul the Six. Welcome to those who are watching on the Money Minute Sports Network, as well as Ball is Life. I'm Megan McKeith, joined alongside Doug Martin. And Doug, the monumental, if I have to make a pun here, of this game, it's a top 25 matchup between these two teams right now, just dealing with a clock delay. But how important is this game, especially when you think about the landscape of the future of the season? Well, I, I think both teams want to start off and get, uh, you know, start off fast and, and, and get this game underway so uh, you can get some momentum going into the, you know, the ne your next game. I know you don't want to look, you don't want to look past this game, but you also, you, you want to start that momentum now after the beginning of the year, you're starting conference play. So I, I think this is it's extremely important for both teams. You know, we talked about the fact of how big this game is, it's so big that they've got Oh, absolutely. There, there's at all times there's going to be ten Division One players on the floor. So um, this is a, 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 a for a college coach to come in and see ten Division One players at one time is a fantastic evening. And we'll take a look now at the Ball Is Life top ten. When you look at these top ten teams, of course, Montverde always in the top one through three, along with Hamilton Heights and Oak Hill. But then you look down the bottom, IMG Damatha sitting at nine. When you look at how strong the DMV hoops is, you get it on a nightly basis. You can never be off your game. No, no, not at all. I mean, Paul the Six is uh, is living proof of that. They, you know, fourth in the country, and they play McNamara at home and lose that game. So, you know, and then they, you know, it started a trickle effect for them. And coming into this game, Paul the Six, they just want to get a W. Have lost three games straight. They're in uncharted territories. Yeah, I was talking to Coach Rello yesterday, and this is the first time in program history that he's lost three games in a row. So it's, you know, and it, the matchmakers don't do you justice when they schedule Gonzaga right after that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we get a chance to take a look at the starting lineups for both squads for Gonzaga. It'll be Devin Dinkins, Chuck Harris, Carlos Hub, Terrence Williams, and Miles Stute for Coach Steve Turner. And on the other side for Paul the Six, Trevor Keels, Jeremy Roach, William Page, Tyler Coleman, and Josiah Freeman. Excuse me, Doug McDaniel will start. And you know, you talk about, you just mentioned Paul the Six and having to deal with Gonzaga. Now, Gonzaga looking at this matchup, you know, you gave me the fun fact and then I tweeted it out along with a, a short video. Coming into this gym, warm-ups are an interesting way to send a message early. <laughs> right. They allow the opposing team to come in and warm up for a few minutes by themselves, and then all of a sudden it goes lights out and the music starts. Talk about Gonzaga and how they have to maintain their mental game going into this game for the next 32 minutes. Well, the, the, the best part for Gonzaga with that is you're starting four seniors. So they've seen this four different <laughs> times, you know. You have a sophomore guard who's only seen it twice, but four seniors, you know, I think this is a, you know, you, you need that coming into this atmosphere. And we're finally underway here after a bit of a delay with the clock, but they've got it going now down low. Couldn't get it to go. It was Harris and PVI comes back the other way. Yeah, I think PVI has to get off to a, a good start at the beginning of the game just to get some momentum, just to feel good about themselves after losing three in a row. Keels now with it, 10 on the shot clock. Roach is going to attack, kicks it back. Keels for three, off the mark. And turns wins with the rebound there. Around the horn, Hub has it. He goes to Harris. In the corner, Dinkins off the pump fake, still scoreless as Freeman comes up with the rebound. It seems like both teams are a little tight, you know, coming into they know how big this game is. Roach working with Freeman. It's one of the things Gonzaga's going to really have to hone in on is their ball screen defense because 
Everything PVI does is initiated and ends with the ball screen. Heels in the paint, doesn't go. And we're still scoreless here early on. Just about two minutes gone by. That three, air ball from Williams, and he hears it from the sixth man. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with PBI is they want to get, you know, rebound miss shots and get a bunch of, you know, easy layups. Roach, pull up jumper. Doesn't go. Maybe, maybe, maybe the first team to 10 wins this game here. <laughs> the way we've started, it might be that way. <laughs> the slam from Stoop doesn't go. We're probably a combined 0 for 7. Make that one for seven as Trevor Keels gets PVI on the board. And that's what PVI wants to do. They want to get out in transition, try to get some easy baskets off missed shots. And a whistle and a foul. Tyler, Josiah Freeman with the foul. So that'll send Terrence Williams to the free throw line to try and tie it up at two. I know Terrence probably feels probably the most relaxed kid in the gym now that you know he signed with Georgetown, committed to Georgetown early in the year, and then decommitted from Georgetown now and just a couple days ago committed to Michigan. So he has that weight off his shoulders. Makes you wonder if he's seen Patrick Ewing sitting base live. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're recruitable until you actually sign. That's true. <laughs> and Roach coming right back the other way to take a 4-2 lead for PVI. Yeah, it's important for those guys to, you know, all the players, that the key players that need to get buckets for each team are both getting, you know, Terrence with four points and, and Roach and Kills both with two apiece. Those are the guys that really have to score. Offensive foul. And they're going to get that one on Roach. Yeah. And Coach Farello is going to make an early sub here. He's going to go with the freshman early, Deshaun Harris Smith. where the jumper doesn't go. Quickly up the floor in the corner. McDaniel with the offensive rebound. Smallest guy on the floor gets the offensive rebound. And that's the one thing I remember from having one of their games at Hoop Fest. Smallest guy on the floor managed to come up with the biggest rebounds. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Peels off the handoff. Good defense there from Gonzaga, and then going top window, that's Coleman. And not to discredit Tyler at all, he's a really good player, but anytime you can get additional points from that, your, the guys that's not your main guys, it takes a lot of pressure off the guys who are supposed to score the basketball. Looks like PBI is just going to throw bodies at, at Gonzaga at the beginning of the games. Try and wear them out. Now, you're, yeah. you're very familiar with these two teams. When you look at the styles of coaching, Coach Farrello goes deep into his bench. Coach mm. Turner, not so much. No, it's, I, I, you know, I, I, it's, with, with Coach Turner, I think it's mostly I'm going to go with my seniors, guys, and he plays a real methodical half-court set offense. Where PBI is just... Let's go as fast as we can. Let's get as many easy baskets, as many possessions as we can get. Monumental Sports Network and Ball is Life have partnered to bring you the best high school basketball the country has to offer. Nationally ranked teams like IMG Academy, DeMatha, and St. John's, plus games from major high school invitationals. All can be seen beginning tonight, streamed on Monumental Sports Network and Ball is Life's YouTube channel. Harris misses his first free throw. Now 
Now, da, you mentioned Deshaun Harris-Smith checking into the game. Can I make the assumption that when he's in the game, he wears number 13, but on my roster, he's number three? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's just hope he's in the book as number it's number 13. That's true. That's what matters. <laughs> right. Offensive rebound, but they're going to say stepping on the line as William Page try to save that possession, but they do turn it over to Gonzaga. And a 6-5 lead here still for PVI. 3-19 to play in this first quarter. As, you know, halfway through the first quarter, it's not always evident of what, you know, the game's going to entail. But as of right now, I think PVI is getting what they want, you know, out of this game. Multiple possessions, getting baskets, you know, shots at the basket, and just throwing Gonzaga down in their half-court sets. And even on the defensive end, plays like that, it's not necessarily that they get the steal, but just a deflection to get it out of bounds, that can also send a mental message. Exactly, and it, and it takes Gonzaga. Gonzaga is a, a rhythm-oriented team. So deflections, uh, out of bounds, making them reset, kind of gets that, you know, starts that rhythm. Harris, the extra pass to Stute doesn't go on. The offensive board, though, couldn't get the bounce. They've got another offensive board. This time doesn't go for Williams, but we've got a whistle and a foul. And although... Coach Farello uses a lot of lineups. Although he uses a lot of lineups, Doug, Coach Farello is dealing with some early foul trouble. Yes, yeah, uh, 5-0 in the first six, you know, five and a half minutes of the game. And uh, even though you, you you dress 14 guys, I don't think you go into the game wanting to play 14. But it looks like from, you know, first quarter, Coach Morales will have to go deeper into his bench than he, he probably wants to. But the upside to that, in future big games like this one, yep. the guys that might not get as much PT in a game, they've got that experience. Exactly, exactly. Jeremy like, Roach returns. Yeah, I like what Coach Morello did there. He, you know. At, at all times, you'll see Jeremy or Trevor on the floor. Trevor kills on the floor at all times. So, you know, subbing one for the other early in the first half just to give both guys, you know, a quick blow. Page kicks it. Harris Smith with it, eight on the shot clock. He gets by the defense, and they're going to wave that off and call an offensive foul. Well, this is... I, I can honestly say in all my years of watching basketball, I've never seen a game start off 6-0 in fouls right away, especially for the home team. And that's three on Deshaun in the first quarter. Usually there's a little bit of home cooking. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. Before halftime, it'll be even up, the fouls. I, it wouldn't <laughs> shock me, Doug. It would not shock me. Tied at six apiece here. Megan McPeak, Doug Martin here on Monumental Sports Network and Ball is Life YouTube channel. Huge top 25 matchup between Gonzaga and Paul VI as Roach got the strip, goes out of bounds, but again goes back to what we were talking about, just forcing Gonzaga out of their rhythm. Exactly, exactly. Looks like Terrence Williams has his mind made up to get a bucket every time he touches the basketball. Dinkins with 13 on the shot clock. Off one foot. Doesn't go. Roach with the rebound. Up the floor quickly. McDaniel comes back out to Roach. Deep three. Nothing but net. And that's how PBI wants to play. They want to push tempo, push tempo. Easy layups or open threes. Another foul. And that is our... Mountain Dew kickstart first three of the ball game. And it was, that was Steph Curry territory <laughs> on that one. Right. We're game in, in, in Fairfax, and Jeremy shot that from Vienna. <laughs> and back to the line goes Gonzaga. 
The one thing, though, Doug, they haven't done is convert at the free throw line with the amount of attempts that they've had. Right, yeah, and that's, you know, it's, that, 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 that can play a key part in the end of the game, too, because it sets a message for PBI's coaching staff on who you can foul. If this is a tight game at the end, who you can foul at the end of the game. Harris misses both, but they get the offensive board. Mm -hmm. Williams, the three, doesn't go. Coleman with the rebound. Up the floor is Roach. They got Roach and Keels on the floor together. And a whistle and a foul. And Coach Turner not happy with that. However, he's got to look up at the clock and realize <laughs> it's 7 to 1 in fouls right now with a minute 26 in the first to go. Right, as a coach, you probably don't want any fouls on any of your players during the game. You know, even though it's a low-scoring team and PBI is a fast-paced team, like I said before, I really feel like this game is trending in their favor the way the game is unfolding right now. And a nice play there. The backdoor action for Jeremy Roach. Turnaround fadeaway rattles through for Malcolm Dredd. And quickly, PVI coming right back the other way. A nice move from Roach. Couldn't get it to fall, though. Right, but, but it still indicates pace. You know, PVI is playing at the pace that they want to play at. They, you know, they don't, they, they want to get the next possession to get another shot off. 45 to play now in the first. And it goes out of bounds. They will say PVI basketball. They've got an 11-8 lead here early. Gonzaga's at a kind of a, a, a lineup that's not traditional for them. Just, and, and I think it's part of the pace of the game. They're starting to, you know, wear guys down. And uh, Coach Turner has to, you know, conserve some energy for the end of the game. Keels. Step back. Long two. Doesn't go Freeman offensive board. Too strong on that one. The putback from Coleman is there, though. McDaniels with the steal. And a whistle and a foul. Great heads up defensive play from Doug McDaniels. Yeah, and, it's, and, it's, and I, as I said before, and I, and I know I keep saying this point over and over, but just the pace, picking up full court, running on makes, running on misses. This is what's going to happen for Gonzaga all day. Watch some of the top college recruits coming out of the DMV exclusively on the Monumental Sports Network. The High School Basketball Showcase is brought to you by WGL. Get access at MonumentalSportsNetwork.com. You know, and here we go again. PBI seven, three guys at a time. Just keep, you know, keep wearing them down. Keep wearing them down. And that's with only 11 seconds to go in the corner. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. But, you know, he subs Trevor Kills out and Jeremy Roach in that end of the quarter, so you get these 11 seconds, and you possibly get the first minute of the second, the second quarter as well. And see, Doug, that's why I just call the game and you analyze it. <laughs> With the steal at, from half off the mark after one quarter of basketball, Paul the Six leads Gonzaga 15-8 to eight here on the Monumental Sports Network. WGL is the future of energy, providing you with energy answers. For more information, go to WGL.com. Back to action as we get set to start the second quarter here from Fairfax, Virginia, and Paul the Six. And the student section for Paul the Six has once again 
come to play. <laughs> <laughs> and they let us know before the game, every home game is a theme night. Tonight, right. it's USA. USA, that's right, USA. A 15 to eight lead to start the second quarter. And a turnover. And you can tell just by the hands on the head of Coach Varello. Not the way he wanted to start. <laughs> right. It's probably a play he drew up at the end of the quarter, just before the beginning of the quarter as well. Late whistle, but the right one as Malcolm Dredd got caught dragging that pivot foot. Oh. And, you know, PVI is, you know, pushing Gonzaga out to 35 feet from the basket for them to run their offense. And, you know, I say it over and over, but this is just part of pushing the pace, pushing the pace in the game. Roach in the paint. Rolls off the rim. He gets his own rebound from the back tap. McDaniels orchestrates. Somehow Coleman caught that. How Doug? I don't know. <laughs> it went to a yellow jersey. I think Doug is, one, is all he wants. 17 to 8 lead. McDaniels almost comes up with a steal. Loose ball. It's Keeltz. McDaniels goes back to him for the layup. Yeah. Just keep pushing pace, picking up full court, turning them over, getting easy layups. It's gonna be it's, it's gonna be a real struggle for Gonzaga with this lineup on the floor for without you know Terrence Williams on the floor their go-to guy to get you know to get buckets in this game. Jensen to defend, but still able to put it up and in is Miles Stoop. McDaniel's. I think Miles may be the first guy to score outside of well Dre scored on the basket, but other than Terrence Williams is the other only other guy who has scored today. Too strong that time. Heels with the rebound. Keeps it himself. No whistle. Stu with the rebound. PVI wanted a whistle on that one. Stu. It's hard to believe that that wasn't a foul. Yeah, you see as Gonzaga was struggling in the half-court offense or just get buckets as well. He had to put Terrence Williams right back in the game. It's probably a bit sooner than he wanted to. Harris in the corner. Gets out of it. Now in the paint. Pull up jumper. Off the mark. And I've counted. PVI has played 10 players in the first quarter already this game. That to rattle in, and they've got an 11 point lead here in the second quarter. Harris too strong off the rebound, kicks it, and Stoop puts it up and in. With the amount of rebound, offensive rebounds, and free throws that Gonzaga's going, it's kind of helping them stay in this game because in the half court offense, you know, they don't have many two pointers in this game. And yet, PBI still hasn't shot a free throw. That, well, Doug shot a free throw. Bring your group to Wizards game. All group tickets come with a Wizards t-shirt provided by Custom Inc. Visit WashingtonWizards.com or call 202-661-5050 to buy tickets. Great find, tough result as it goes out of bounds. Right. Yeah. I don't think Luke was... Uh, Anticipating the pass there from, from Jeremy Roach, even though he was wide open. Williams. So as you can see, Gonzaga wants to, you know, kind of grind it out on the offensive end to get wide open, you know, to get wide open shots. But you know, PBI gets the rebound. And then, you know, Turns into a track meet. Freeman the three. And as I said, this is all part of this pace, just playing with pace, pushing the tempo. 24 to 12 lead, 435 to play. Tip from behind. 
as Roach got a piece of that. You know, besides the, you know, Coach Ferrello not getting to the free throw line, I think if, you know, if we were to go down on the court and ask him about the game, he's extremely happy with the pace of the game, the deflections that they're getting. Um, probably wants to see, you know, his defensive rebound is a little better than it is right now, but he has to be extremely happy with the way, you know, his squad is playing. Terrence Williams in the paint doesn't get the bucket. He is fouled, so we'll go to the free throw line. It's going to be interesting to see off the make or the miss of these free throws, you know, how fast PBI again pushes the pace in the game. Williams gets the first. It'll be interesting to see how much Coach Turner can keep Williams on the floor and how much time he's going to get for a breather. Does he utilize what Coach Farello does with getting him off at the end of a quarter just to get him those extra seconds. Yeah, I think that's going to be part of the plan that he has to do to, you know, as I, you know, as you can see, 14 points. Turns has 10 of those 14 points for, for Gonzaga. And Tyler Coleman getting that one up. Harris to Williams. Doubled. Kicks. Extra pass to the corner. Hub the three off the mark. Williams collects the offensive board. Around the defense, too strong. Gets his own, gets his own again. Loose ball. Out of bounds. It will stay with Gonzaga. Yeah, Gonzaga's just doing a great job of crashing the offensive glass. A lot of it is Terrence Williams getting his Moses Malone on. You know, shoot up off a shot and get the offensive rebound right away. And We've got 3.51 to play, and Terrence is just hands on knees, kneeled yeah. over. Right. It seems like the pace is slowly starting to get to him. Yes, and, 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 this is, and this is indicative of him missing so many easy layups as well. And he's also three for six from the free throw line in this first half. So, you know, he's, he's working. They, you know, they're making him work. The more chippies he misses and has to exert that energy to put it back up, the less energy he has, but in the corner, yeah. Knocking that down, Carlos Hub. Yeah, as I, you know, as I said before, anytime somebody else can get a basket for Gonzaga, it takes a lot of pressure off of Terrence Williams. As you can see him walking back on offense now. Hub to Harris for three. In and out. Jensen with the rebound. McDaniels. You know, even when the half-court offense for PBI, they just still put a lot of pressure on you with paint touches. You know, dribble penetration. McDaniels, same spot as the last one he took. And just as nice, they've got a 29-17 lead over Gonzaga. PBI's been yet to get over the, you know, the 12-point, you know, advantage that they've had. And again, long rebound. Push tempo again. McDaniels turns the ball over. Harris quickly up the floor. Jensen has a block, but they're going to get a whistle beforehand. If you look at every player for uh, Gonzaga on the floor, they either, you know, hands on their knees, doubled over, you know, turns Williams at the sideline trying to get his, you know, breather, water, uh, anything he can get to, you know, to get a second win right now. Yeah, that last, that last time down offensively prior to this foul, he barely made it to half court before. Right. The miss and PVI going back the other way. Right, and, and, and unfortunately for Terrence, he's 16 more minutes to play. Roach too strong, but Jensen is there for the cleanup. Yeah, and, you know, it's just volume shots. You know, volume shots. Let's get his, PVI wants to get as many possessions as they can get to get, you know, to work Gonzaga down. 
Cub to Stoot. Out to Harris. Behind the back to Stoot. 10 on the shot clock. Williams kicks. Hub three. Off the mark. Two things PBI is going to do every offensive possession. Push the pace and ball screen. Coleman couldn't get that one to fall. Quickly up the floor in transition. As Mintz was there. That is big time there. Coach Turner upset with the lack of call on that one. Well, I tell you this, for the college coaches that are in the building, if you don't know Judah Mintz, he just introduced himself <laughs> to you. The athleticism on that. And the foul. I don't think Jeremy Roach was expecting that from on, his, on, on the defensive end. He's normally the one doing it. <laughs> exactly. little student on student action <laughs> prime going back and forth corner to corner Keels Roach this one off the mark Keels with the offensive board under a minute to play now in the half Keels <laughs> 34 19 lead for Paul the sixth. Yeah, Coach Rello talked to me yesterday about how bad that they're, you know, how poorly they're shooting three pointers. Must be doing a lot of shooting during the snow so, you know. And an offensive foul called on Gonzaga. That's the second on Judah Mintz. And he's asking for a sub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, you know, again, it's just, it, it, it's going to be tough to see Gonzaga in the, you know, last four minutes of the game to see what their, what their conditioning is like. Just because, you know, how, how PBI is pushing the pace. It's not a player for PBI that's doubled over on the floor. You know, they just, they take pride in, you know, they've been well conditioned and keep pushing pace. Keels dribbling out the shot clock. Coleman is there to wait. 10 on the shot clock. Keels finds Roach, has it blocked. They're gonna get a jump ball. That was a big stop for Gonzaga, you know, to possibly go down in the half, you know, 18 points, maybe, you know, 19 points with an and one there, so. They can get a stop there and get a bucket here. I hope Coach Turner will feel good about himself going into the halftime. So Gonzaga will have 10.9 seconds to get the ball over and get a shot off. Dinkins with ball in hand. Williams rattles it through. And Huge Coach shot. Turner with the swag just walks <laughs> off the floor. And our score at halftime here from Paul the Six. They lead it 34-22 over Gonzaga at the half. WGL, the future of energy providing you with energy answers. For more information, go to WGL.com.
your YouTube channel and the high school showcase and what they're doing. Can you talk more about what that partnership is about? Yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity for Monumental Sports and Ball's Life. I mean, when you look at, you know, the premier basketball platform out there, it's Ball's Life. And, uh, you know, what better way to validate our schedule with these top teams in the DMV and on a national ranking than to partner with these guys? Uh, and, and big shout out to, you know, Matt uh, and Randy over on that side. Uh, we really just want to bring great basketball to the nation and uh, showcase our talent out here. Pretty good game to start the partnership with. Top, two top 25 teams when you look at Gonzaga and PVI and what they've been able to do. A great first half and the atmosphere here. Is this something that Ball is Life really focuses on and why Monumental wanted to do that partnership? Yeah, I mean, Ball is Life, I mean, you know, all the kids know. You know the first thing when you see these highlights, it's Ball is Life, right? Uh, and, and Monumental, we want to be a real player in the game. And so, you know, uh, partnering with these guys and bringing this kind of atmosphere pretty much on a regular, at, uh, regular night uh, is what we're looking for. And, and these are the kind of games you're going to get when, uh, you know, you tune in on the YouTube channel. And, you know, we hope everybody enjoys. And this is just the start of something really great uh, between us. So with the partnership, it broadcasts simul simultaneously on both, net both networks at the same time. So tonight, fans that are watching on Ball is Life's YouTube channel. The same fans can also watch on the Monumental Sports Network, and that's the partnership going forward. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've got a great slate of games that's going to be on the Ball is Life YouTube channel, but, you know, we also want to make sure you guys check out Monumental Sports Network. Uh, we've got some great tournaments coming up. We've got the uh, Bob Kirk Invitational. It's going to feature uh, Mount Verde, IMG. Uh, we've got the uh, uh, St. James Invitational. Um, and then we have Alhambra. It's going to be a great tournament. And, you know, it brings out guys like Ish Smith. And, and <laughs> you know, these, these are the type of the moments you have out here for it. And, and, and so, you know, this is the type of basketball you want to have, right? You know. So, Ish, I'm, I'm going to ask sports. you. I'm, I, I know it's tight quarters here, but we're making it work. I mean, it's, I'm athletic. It, we're, but, <laughs> listen, you, we've got injuries on the Wizards. I don't need to be in trouble for an injury to you. No, 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 no. So, Ish, I'm going to ask you the question that most fans are probably wondering. What brings you to a game like this between PVI and Gonzaga? Uh, first of all, this is good basketball. <laughs> um, I wish, you know, I sound like an old head, but I wish I uh, had this kind of atmosphere when I was growing up, uh, you know, 10, 14, 15 years ago. Uh, uh, but Judah Mitz, uh, I'm a good friend of his cousin and uh, – uh, that dunk he had was pretty impressive. <laughs> oh. and, and so uh, I came out here to check him out. He's playing, you know, this is good basketball. The atmosphere is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it makes you, I'm getting goosebumps kind of watching him play. Just seeing this type of game, the future of basketball, yeah. when you look at the future of the NBA, it seems like it's, it's going to be pretty hands. It's in great hands. I'm telling you, just the way they know how to play, the feel of the game, the one more, it's just the whole kind of morale of basketball. It's good basketball out here. So uh, I'm more impressed with how they're playing and how to, the feel of the game they're playing with. We appreciate you joining us. I appreciate y'all. Karen, I, I appreciate you joining hey, me as well, you, too. I appreciate y'all coming in. All the YouTubers, guys, check out the slate of games we've got coming up, man. Ball's Life, thank you so much. Uh, Megan, Ish, love appreciate you guys. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Welcome back as we get set to start the third quarter here. Paul the six with a 34-22 lead to start the third quarter. Megan McPeak and Doug Martin with you here on the Monumental Sports Network, as well as those watching on Ball is Life's YouTube channel. And quickly, PVI trying to get things going and pick up where they left off in that first half. Yeah, I hope one of the things that Coach Turner talked about was, you know, one, getting back on defense and two, kind of converting on the offensive end to kind of slow PVI's pace down. They've cut it to 10. Trying to create some turnovers on the defensive end. And a whistle and a foul. 
So, I, I, you know, I, I think one of the things is, you know, Coach Varela wants to come back on the floor and continue the same intensity, continue the same push, you know, pushing the pace and everything. And, you know, Coach Turner wants to come back and kind of slow them down, get their offense going, uh, and get some stops. Roach. McDaniels now with it. Now it's Freeman. He attacks. Bounces around, doesn't go. Coleman fighting for that offensive board. The loose ball is picked up by McDaniels. Now Keels. McDaniels working with Coleman. Turns it over. Up the floor. And a huge block from Keels on Dinkins. But it's Mintz with the offensive cleanup, but down on the ground, I believe that is Trevor Keels. Yeah, I think and he, that is not what you want to see. No, I think he landed on uh, Dinkins on the block shot and kind of rolled his ankle from what I saw. See the Washington Wizards stars of tomorrow on the court today. Tune into the Monumental Sports Network Saturday night when Admiral Schofield and the Capital City Go Go host the Sioux Falls Sky Force. Tony Massenberg and I will have the call for you at 10 p.m. on the Monumental Sports Network. Don com. Dot com. Excuse me. <laughs> if I can speak. <laughs> I thought that was the Canadian accent. <laughs> you had to get one in there, right? <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. Tony gets me every time, at least once a game. He makes a crack about it. Mm. Jeremy Keels. The good thing, he's on his feet. Right. Yes, he does need assistance walking off, but he is putting pressure on that leg as he gets help off. Right. Also, I know Trevor Kills. It's a lot of dramatic effect going on right now, too. Because he won't not finish this game. Yeah. I'm assuming he'd have to be in a body cast in order to not finish the yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. A priest and a doctor will have to tell him he can't finish the game. So he'll be tended to on the bench. We'll keep an eye on him. And the luxury that Coach Varello has, and not that there's luxury on anybody, but, you know, he's replaced by Christian May, who's a 6'5 wing, who's, you know, a great shooter. So, you know, PBI is going to, you know, just restock and reload and put the next guy in. And it makes you wonder if this was as you know, hard, harsh as it may sound, this might be what Gonzaga needs to get over that mental hump. Exactly. And, you know, PBI started off the second half with a missed shot and, you know, and, and two turnovers. Kick ball out of bounds. It will stay with Gonzaga as they have got it to within single digits. First time it's been this close since the first quarter early on. Right, right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been a tale of, you know, two styles. You know, now in the, the beginning of the second half, Gonzaga's playing at their pace, playing at their speed, you know, getting the easy shots at the basket, playing through turns wins. Great find from Stute to Harris. Roach. McDaniels the three. Off the mark. Williams with the rebound. Harris kicks, and an offensive foul is called on the pass. Yeah, PBI uh, out Gonzaga to Gonzaga on that defensive possession. And Coach Farello would like a 30-second timeout as they haven't scored since halftime. Nearly three minutes have gone by. No score for... Paul the sixth and Coach Furlow, I assume, is 
seen enough that he would like to talk things over. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm sure the message with this is just reminding these guys of who they were in the first half. You know, a lot of times you go in the locker room, you got a double-digit lead, and you, know, you tend to relax. You know, now Coach Rello has to get these guys amped back up, keep playing at their pace, and, and, and wear Gonzaga down. After the timeout, PVI will have possession after the offensive foul called. Roach. Working with Coleman, goes away from him, comes back middle on the attack, left it short, got his own rebound. And, that's just and then the steal from McDaniels. Taken away, loose ball on the ground, May picks it up. McDaniels. May with the steal. Kicks it, Roach three. May trying to keep it alive with Coleman down there. And you again, and as I said before, you know, you, you, you want to convert on those, but this is what PBI wants to do. They just want to make the game as ugly and as mucked up as possible just to, get, just to continue to push their pace, continue to embark their will on this game. Thirty-six twenty-eight lead right now for Paul the Sixth. 5-10 to play in the third. Williams, three doesn't go. Harris, the rebound. Too strong off glass. Williams, the rebound. Can't get it to go. Gets his own. Puts it up again with his own rebound again. And finally, it's Carlos Hub able to put it up and in. They've got it within six. Four offensive rebounds on one possession there for Gonzaga. Freeman, too strong. Harris, they've got a four on three. And a huge three from Dinkins. They got that possession out with Terrence Williams never getting past the three-point line of his defensive possession. Almost four minutes gone by in the third, and Williams again holding onto his shorts, looking exhausted, but it's a three-point game. Roach finds Coleman who got behind the defense. Plays like that makes he's gonna make Coach K look like a very smart guy <laughs> next year. Dinkins. Harris got it from Hub. In the paint, drops it off. And a huge dunk from Stoop. 38-35. PVI. Coleman up under. Doesn't go. Williams with the rebound. They can tie with a three on this possession. And it's knocked out of bounds. One thing I will note, we saw Trevor Keels walk off the floor, I assume to the locker room, so you wonder how that foot is feeling. And now, as you, as you mentioned that, he's walking right back. And as I the, said, he walks right back out. <laughs> it makes you wonder if he went to the hallway just to see, you know, run if up and down. Test, if he can test that ankle at all. Yep. And he's okay. going to walk to the scorer's table. Doug, you might know a little thing or two about <laughs> Trevor Keels. I, I, I told you a lot of that what, that he did was absolutely dramatic effect. Scoot three was halfway down and popped out. McDaniels up the floor. Cut off by Stintz. As I said before, Gonzaga, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to defend PBI's pace, and you're gonna have to defend a ball screen at every on every possession. Roach. Stoop was there to tie it up. A great defensive play there, and you know what? It started with the defense on the perimeter. All right. And now Jeremy Roach is making his way to the locker room.
you know, it's, it's, it's awfully humid in here, so I wonder if a lot of that is... Causing know, any cramping? Yeah, causing some cramping for those guys. I'm hoping he's just got to use the bathroom. <laughs> Great backdoor cut from Stoop for the dunk. And a one-point lead for Paul the sixth. Remember what I told you earlier, Megan, at the end of the first half when PBI had a chance to go up by 19, and I said that would be, you know, huge for them, and, and, and they didn't. It turns around to that three, and, you know, you know this as well as anybody else. It's, basketball is a game of momentum and runs, and right now, tough shot. And right now, Gonzaga has all the momentum and, you know, and, 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 and has the largest run right now. That jumper from Keels looked good. The ankle and the foot looked good. Mintz to Dinkins. Ten on the shot clock. Got his man in the air. And right back at his PBI. McDaniels lost the handle, taken away, and then taken right back by McDaniels. And spinning around to the corner. Keels, deep three, off the mark. Watch Monumental Basketball on Monumental Sports Network, brought to you by WGL. A four-month season pass is just $24.99 for hundreds of hours of the best basketball in the DMV. Visit MonumentalSportsNetwork.com to get access. Yeah, again, I think it's a hydration issue with Jeremy Roche, you know, right back into the game. Maybe, maybe Paul VI has magical powers in that hallway back there. Who knows? <laughs> if they do, I'd like to take some. <laughs> we can all use a little magic. Yeah, amen. Williams doubled in the corner, gets it out. Dinkins attacks, kicks, one more, corner three, hub, in and out. And a whistle and a foul. They're going to say it will stay with Gonzaga. It's kind of the same theme as we had at the beginning of the game where, you know, Paul VI momentum and tempo has been stymied by foul calls, you know, on the defensive end or not, or not gathering the rebound. The lob, Stute comes down with it, puts it up and in, and they've got their first lead of the ball game. Up the floor quickly, here's Roach. Right to the hoop. They're gonna count the bucket and the foul for Trevor Keels. I just kind of have a flashback to uh, Paul Pierce in the NBA Finals one year when he was <laughs> <The> wheelchair. <laughs> He was wheelchaired off the court and came back and won the game for his. One for the day, second. one day we'll get the real story to that. One day. Trevor Kills has his own version of it going on right now. <laughs> Two point lead now for Paul the sixth. That lead did not last long for Gonzaga. Hub. Stoop. Turns Williams is standing at the top of the three point line. Kind of taking a blow. Freeman. A Push whistle and a foul. Pushing the back. And Coach Turner is looking at the official, pointing to the other end. One thing I can say about Steve Turner, if you call a foul against him, you are 100% wrong. <laughs> In the eyes of Steve Turner. <laughs> exactly. Jensen returns. Freeman at the line trying to extend this lead. Just a little bit more closing this third quarter. What a fantastic game, Doug, it's been so far. Yes. This is what happens when you have two top 25 teams in the country, you know, battling every night. 45-41 lead, 25 to play in the quarter. Mintz. Williams. 
the good Hands thing, off. the good thing with this with Gonzaga is, you know, you played the quarter, or, you know, you played the third quarter, and Terrence Williams basically took a, you know, took a breather, a breather. the whole half of the of this game. Roach, one second, knocks it down. I think he's suffering from uh, cramps. And Paul the Six takes a 48-41 lead, and Roach is down. And just by the way that they're grabbing that leg, it looks like he is cramping. And a 48-41 lead after three. Joe. WGL, the future of energy, providing you with energy answers. For more information, go to WGL.com. As we welcome you back and get set to start the fourth quarter, a 48-41 lead. And, Doug, we were chatting quickly in that break, and I was saying that schools should maybe be sponsored by Pedialyte, and you said something about mustard packs? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it actually works, but I just remember a long time ago a player going down and one of the trainers ran to uh, the concession stand and got the kid up, squirted, <laughs> squirted mustard? mustard and, you know, came back and came back and was, you know, able to play. Interesting. I yeah. need to Google that. <laughs> Anybody watching, if you, if you are a trainer or a nutritionist of some sort, tweet me and let me know how that helps if it is true. <laughs> Does hot sauce work? <laughs> I don't know if hot sauce works. <laughs> <laughs> and a blocking foul called on, on Joe Freeman. You so know, e e even though, you know, PVI has, you know, dwindled a 16-point lead down to seven, you know, I, I, I still think Coach Torello has to feel comfortable with the pace that they're playing at and, you know, TV has a quick score offense, you know, mm -hmm. so they can they can hurry up and get back into the game with, you know, awful, you know. Like or a turnover or like a that turnover from like Gonzaga. That. Yep. Yeah. And over and back, Paul, and kind of to your point, Doug, as well, you think about the fact that Gonzaga took a one-point lead. Yes, it was very quickly, but then PVI rattled off. I want to say it was six straight points to take a seven point lead into the fourth quarter. Right, and, that, and that's, you know, that's what PBI wants to do. They want to, you know, play fast, you know, and, and, and put a lot of pressure on your defense. And they get the bounce there for McDaniels. That's, that is home cooking right there. Coming right back at him though, Harris lays it up and in. That, that's one of the main reasons that that Butler was so high on Chuck Harris when they recruited him because of his just natural ability to score the basketball. You know, don't need Chuck Harris one of the few players on the floor that you don't need to call a set for him for him to be, you know show his aggression and get a basket. 50-43 lead for Paul the sixth. Freeman attacks, gets right into the paint for the layup. And that's that's a case of uh, Freeman going against the scouting report because you know Freeman's probably one of the better. Uh, catch and shoot guys in the area. Wow, foul call. They're going to give that to Jensen. He thought that was a clean block. They're going to say he got him on the arm. Well, I can say this. As a guy who graduated from Gonzaga in 89, I don't remember him ever being in any of my classes. 
<laughs> that was definitely a Gonzaga call for, <laughs> for that referee. PBI has secured the rebound and has started their break there. Watch the best teams, fiercest rivalries, and superstar athletes in the DMV, including some of the most competitive high school leagues in the country, exclusively on the Monumental Sports Network, brought to you by WGL. Visit MonumentalSportsNetwork.com to get access. And Williams yeah, missing. Yeah, you know, again, I think it's a case of just fatigue starting to add up. Freeman doesn't get the three. Dinkins with the rebound. 52-44 lead. Two minutes gone by in the fourth. That one ends up in the hands of Jenkins off the air ball. You know, even though you know PBI is up by eight, you know, it, it feels like it's a 13-point game, a 14-point game because of you know how quickly PBI plays and, and how quickly they can turn off defense to offense. Heels too strong. Jenkins is there, got his own off the miss. Yeah, that's a situation of, you know, just fresh body coming in the game, turns, wins, can't fight them off the glass to kind of get, you know, Jack from getting this, you know, a putback shot. Mintz got cut off on the baseline by Freeman. Kicks it. Dread off the mark. Out of bounds, it will go to Paul the sixth. See how long did these uh, the cramps that Jeremy Roach has, you know, suffered in the second half, how long he can go with, you know, just having those cramps right now. He was on the sideline trying to stretch it out before he checked in. But it will be interesting because sometimes you can just make a weird move and mm -hmm. a cramp can happen. Right. Keels to Jenkins. Back and to Keels. And that's one of the luxuries that PBI can do with, you know, Trevor Keels. You got Jeremy Roach and uh, Doug McDaniel, which are two point guards. But you can put the ball in Trevor Keels' hands. You can put the ball in Trevor Keels' hands and let him make plays and kind of give those guys a rest. Unfortunately, you know, Gonzaga doesn't have that. You know, if, if Devin Dinkins or Chuck Harris isn't having on the basketball, I don't think they have anybody else out there that can initiate offense for them. The back tap from Page went out of bounds. So Gonzaga takes possession with 4.37 to play and a 10-point lead for Paul the sixth. I think Coach Turner would like to kind of would like to get this, you know, within six, you know, with about three minutes to go or two and a half minutes to go to feel like they, you know, they really got a legitimate shot at getting what they need out of this. Page is going to pick up that foul. Dinkins tripped up on the baseline. Williams off the inbound. Sweeps through Jensen. Taken away. Gets it back as Dread. In and out on the three. Offensive board, though. Taken right out of the hands by Roach. And are they going to get the timeout or are they going to give them out of bounds? They call a timeout. Trevor Keels, that foot looks A-OK. -okay. He tiptoed and danced <laughs> with that baseline <laughs> in the corner before right. getting the timeout. Right. And I think Steve Turner is kind of arguing that point to say, you know, in the, that only in the NBA you can get away with that. And Trevor just got an NBA call in the high school game. Don't forget Monumental Sports Network VIP members get access to exclusive events and complimentary ticket opportunities every month. Start a free trial at GetMonumental.com. What happened to the Canadian accent on the dot .com there? <laughs> <laughs> the 
comes out once in a while. Uh, is that bilingual when you can speak Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start telling people that now. When they ask if I speak another language, I'm just going to say Canadian. Right. There you go. Then people will turn their heads and kind of make faces and wonder what I'm talking about. Then the joke's on them. <laughs> After the timeout, here's Keels. Page. Great find to Jensen. One more. Extra pass, and McDaniels pulls it out. Checks the clock. Too strong. Loose ball. Controlled by Mintz. Taken away from behind by Page. Again, that's you know part of the things that we talked about at the beginning of the game of you know PBI just staying after, playing with pace, trying to you know get into loose balls, getting deflections, and as you can see with Gonzaga, you can see Terrence Winter standing in the middle of the paint, holding his shorts, started to take his toll on you. McDaniel's pull up jumper. Pass. It's a pass. Pull up pass. That's a great pass. That's a great pass. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> exactly. Look at the scores table. Make that, a, make that an assist. That's right. That exactly. was a pass. Exactly. I'm sure doing film study tomorrow, Doug's going to you know, make sure that, that that was an assist in, uh, for him. Mintz couldn't get that to go. Williams able to collect the rebound and up and in. And Coach Turner wants a timeout as they've cut the deficit to 10 with 2.46 to play. Yeah. And this is kind of what I talked about earlier, you know, going into the game, uh, going into the fourth quarter. As, you know, Coach Turner would like to see this game at about six points with about two and a half minutes to go. Um, 2.46 on the clock, and he's down by 10. So he's a little behind schedule, but I think he can, you know, he feel like the, the amount of possessions left in the game, he can, you know, he can get back in this and, and, and best case scenario, push this into overtime. Now, with a 10-point lead and, and just under three to play, if you're Coach Turner, how are you keeping the positive mindset in the huddle right now so that the players can still feel like they can make this a game? Well, you just remind them at halftime you were down 16. You know, and now you, and you, you kind of wipe that deficit down in the first you three or four minutes. You took the lead. Yeah, you took the lead and you... You, you erase that in the third quarter. So, you know, just continue, guys. You know, I'm sure he's talking to his guys. Just have one more push. You know, I think Gonzaga has one more push that they have to uh, have to have to forge ahead. And PBI is here talking about, you know, we you got to sustain this push. You got to if, – if the worst-case scenario for PBI is they probably want to change, you know, exchange baskets with Gonzaga. You don't want to – you don't want a 6-0 run, a 4-0 run, a 5-0 run right here to get Gonzaga back in the game and to give them some life in this game. You also don't want to put them at the free throw line because it stops the clock. Exactly. And it gives them free points. Right. Should exactly. they convert. Exactly. So you want to yeah. also defend but not foul. Uh, right. And now Gonzaga comes with a little token pressure, but, you know, Glenn Farrello has the luxury more than any other team in the country where I can put three ball handles, Jeremy Roach, Doug McDaniel, Trevor Kills, and break any pressure that you put in front of me. Ten on the shot clock. Roach. Keels attacking. Doesn't go. Coleman got hit in the face on the rebound, and he's in some pain. I'm waiting for a teammate to go up to him and how many fingers to that? The other thing, too, is now, I know what happened to me when I played is you get hit in the eye, and if you wear contacts, the first thing you're saying is, okay, is my contact still in my eye? And if it's not, where is it on the floor? Nobody moves. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Coach Turner's argument now is, you know, change of possession, and, you know, now you're adding 30 seconds on the shot clock, so you're giving PVI a chance to, to go at the shot clock and, 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 and eliminate some time off the clock. Off the inbound, Roach, Keels, attacks, kicks to the corner, Page. Yeah, there was a lot of action in the first eight seconds of the shot clock. At this point, the more they take off the shot clock, the more it comes off the game clock. They've got it under two with 10 on the shot clock. Right. Keels to the corner, Page three. 
Um, Offensive rebound, rebound, Roach. And a jump ball called. And that's a tough one. Yes, Gonzaga gets the possession, Doug, but the tough part about that is no boxing out. McDaniels almost came up with that rebound. Exactly, exactly. And now PBI is going right back into, you know, their little token pressure, taking time off the clock. You know, we're at a minute 40 now, still a 10-point game. You know, Coach Turner, it's, it's, it's almost pressing time for Gonzaga. It's almost time for you to kind of get out of character, shoot some, you know, there we go, another three-pointer. So Roach with the rebound. He gets it up to Keels a minute. 20 to play. Coach Turner is trying to get uh, Terrence Williams to press up, but Terrence is exhausted. He's done yeoman's work today, in, you know, on the glass and, getting, and leading his guys. Keels checks the clock. He's got it with six. Rises. Doesn't go. And they're going to say PVI basketball. But the officials will converse. It looked like the hesitation from the official. He at first was going to say Gonzaga basketball and realized PVI was going the opposite direction. I think they're trying to decide whether Chuck Harris had possession of the basketball to eliminate the shot clock violation or was he out of bounds, when, he he out came of bounds down when he came down yeah. before the save? Right. Coach Turner is saying shot clock violation. Yeah, Coach Turner's in the point now where he's going to get, you know, he's going to have to say anything he can to get the. Anything he can to get the basketball back for his, you know, for his team. And his argument is that they reset the shot clock, but he doesn't feel it hit the rim. Right. And he's right. going to get his way. They're going to get shot clock, clock violation. violation. Right. Right. And now Coach Farello is arguing that there was no possession. I think he's arguing that Chuck Harris had the ball when you know he got he gathered the rebound. I think he's arguing that which Chuck, would have been a change of possession. Exactly. And then he's at a bound. So right. Coach he, Farello is arguing that it should be PVI basketball. Right. He's acknowledging the shot clock violation, <laughs> but he's saying as that happened, Chuck Harris possessed the basketball and, and threw the and was out of bounds. Yep. But they're going to keep it with Gonzaga. Coach Furlow, all he can do is just laugh it off. Right. Under a minute to play now. Ten-point ball game. 56-46. Harris doesn't go. Williams puts it up and in. Eight-point game, 46 seconds left. So a timeout on the floor. Both coaches want to talk things over, and Coach Farello still having a word with the officials. Yeah, these guys are going. These two guys are going to coach until it's you know triple zeros on the clock. Um, now you know one of the things that you know PBI has to be careful of, even though they're up eight, you haven't won three straight games. Now, now you got to continue to play, play to win the game, and play not. And, and, and prevent yourself from playing not to lose the game. You know, you don't want sloppy passes. You don't want a turnover right here because, you know, a turnover right here is going to lead to a three or to a quick bucket. And now it's a six-point, you know, it can be a six-point game and you know, now it's two possessions. You know, you want to, if, you're, if you're a PBI, you want to keep this game at three possessions um, for the duration of the game. Especially Paul Six coming off of three straight losses. Yeah. You don't want to give this one away no, it, it, this, by being careless. Well, uh, uh, if Paul Six loses this game, I, I'm going to deem it a, a holiday tomorrow and <laughs> no school with PBI. And a whistle and a foul. It's 
student sections but for both teams <laughs> have been going back and forth, Doug, and now Coach Ferrello is getting his love yes, from the student yes, section. Yes, yes. And a whistle and a foul. Yeah, Chuck Harris fouled Jeremy Roach uh, trying, to get, trying to get the inbounds. And that puts Paul the sixth in the bonus. And even though it's one and one, you, you know, Jeremy, you, you still want to come away with, you know, still want to come away with some points here because, as I said before, you, you, don't, want, you don't want Coach Turner coaching one possession, two possession games. Yeah. But Jeremy Roach will walk to the free throw line. Calmly knocks down the first. Calmly knocks down both of them to make it a 10 point lead. Yeah, now PBI, you just want to kind of not foul or foul. And <laughs> <laughs> you you, you want Gonzaga to, if they score, you want them to score without foul and getting the clock running so you can, you know, now they get to get two free throws and no time on the clock and get to set up their pressure defense. Both coaches making some subs. Coach Turner waiting to make a couple more. Uh, uh, defensive pressure group coming into the game now. I need them to get a second floor sweeper. That poor kid <laughs> has had to run the length of the floor numerous times tonight. PBR pace, you know, even. <laughs> Even the, 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 the he, ball he, boy has he to. He got up and down. <laughs> he has to play with pace as well. And it's very possible that that might be the night for Terrence Williams as he checks out. Right. It, it just seemed like, the you know, in the first quarter, the way PBI played, and, you know, as we talked about, with the deflections mm. and, 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 and pushing the pace. It just kind of wore turns out in the first quarter. And, you know, yep. even though he had a, you know, a really good second quarter, you know, it just kind of lethargic in the second half and, you know, it didn't have much, you know, didn't have much about him in the second half. It was almost as if, as he checks back in, it was almost seemed as if that first quarter took him mentally out of the game. Right. Because there's times where, you know, as a player, when you're the focal point, you've got two options. You fight through the fatigue and allow your mental to overpower the physical or you allow the physical to get you mentally out of the game. Right. And unfortunately, right. in this situation, I think the physical outweighed his mental fight tonight. Uh, I would definitely agree with that. It's, you know, it's, this, this would be a game for Terrence that would be, you know, kind of, you know, a, a launch point for him to say, you know, next time I see PBI or going forward, you know, I, I, I have to fight. You know, I have to be the guy for my team every possession. And I think, as you said before, the fatigue just kind of didn't give him the fight every possession that they needed. So still a 10-point lead as both teams exchanged points under 40 seconds. Harris. Williams, block from Jensen. And that's our play of the game brought to you by Mountain Dew Kickstart. Compliment to the pop from Jack Jensen. In the limited minutes that Jack has played tonight, he has been a difference maker for, you know, PBI. 
couple of offensive rebounds, some deflections, big defensive rebounds. And then got, you know, as you said, the play of the game with that block shot there. He had a really big block in the first half, too, but they got him on the foul. Right. McDaniels misses the free throw. Still a 10-point game. Stoot makes it eight. And Coach Turner wants a timeout. And now what Coach Turner is coaching for is future games. Yes. You know. How to like, execute. How to execute. Let's, you know, guys, I know we're down by eight. It's 20 seconds on the clock. But let's, let's, let's play this game as if we're down by three in, in this time. So, you know, instead of losing by 10, 12 points, you want, you know, possibly lose by four points to show, you know, what you want to do in, that, in those situations in the future. But this also gives PBI a chance to execute at the end as well. Monumental Sports Network and Ball is Life have partnered to bring you the best high school basketball the country has to offer. Nationally ranked teams, IMG Academy, DeMatha, and St. John's, plus games from major high school invitationals. All can be seen beginning tonight, streamed on Monumental Sports Network and Ball is Life's YouTube channel. Gonzaga picking up in the full court. Roach gets trapped. They get it over half. And Coach Turner, right. I don't think he wanted that foul. Right, and that's, that, that goes part of, you know, you don't get what you initially wanted off the pressure defense. You didn't get a steal. You didn't get a turnover. So let's just, you know, kind of play the game out now. Coach Varello making some subs, allowing the fans to acknowledge the play of Keels and Roach. This is a huge, huge win for uh, PBI program with you know losing, losing the games that you know the three games that you've lost to come back and get a victory against you know a nationally ranked team. Harris to the free throw line. If you're Coach Ferrello, you, you can't be happy about no, that. Not, not at all. Not at all. Five seconds on the clock, up by 10. It's no need to be even close enough to the guy to, to foul. And PVI will dribble it out. And they get the win. The student section wants to storm the court. The, co the coaches, they look like football coaches. <laughs> They're holding them back. Let me at them. Let They're me holding at them. them back. <laughs> However, this is, Doug, a huge upset when you think about the fact this was two top 25 teams and a 21 has upset a 15 after losing three straight coming into tonight's game. Right. And as you can see, you know, like, well, and, and it, in the large scheme of things, it does, it, it, because of the rankings, it is an upset. But in the WCAC, this is, this is Thursday night, you know, and, and, and it, this is going to be part of what happens night in and night out as PBI and players go on the floor. They finally got their court storm. <laughs> what? In case fans weren't aware, Coach Ferrello was holding them off saying, wait, he was waiting for Gonzaga to leave the floor right. so that there was no issues. Right, exactly, exactly. And as I said, Gonzaga upset by PVI 62-54, and WGL is proud to be the official and exclusive energy and greening partner for the Capital City Go-Go, Washington Wizards, Capitals, Mystics, and Capital One Arena. 
You can learn more at WGL.com as that will wrap things up here from Fairfax, Virginia. Our final score, Paul the 662, Gonzaga 54. Join us again Saturday here on both Monumental Sports Network and Ball is Life when Mount Zion preps take on number eight IMG Academy at Uptown Hoop Fest. For my broadcast partner, Doug Martin, my producer, Michael Steinberg, and our entire crew here at PVI, good night, DMV.